Greetings, it is Max so Diddly here, and today I'm here with another Java tutorial to be give a in your coursework. And today we're here with writing to a file using random file access. So let's get right into how we do it. So last time we managed to read from a file using random file access. There's an I up in the corner if you want to see that video. I strongly advise you do because it explains how random access files or random file access works. And so we're going to be writing to a file using the same method. So essentially, we pick any position in the file and tell the code, right, I want you to write to the file from this position. So in order to do that effectively, every field and record have to be fixed in length. Essentially, they all have to be X amount of characters long. And if they do don't need to be that long, you just put in a bunch of spaces. This prevents many issues from occurring it, since we don't detect where a record is. We're like, right, a record is from one point to another point. And issues could occur if they're not fixed length, if we are telling the code to jump to a position in the file. Otherwise, we might as well use sequential file access. Anyway, let's get right into how we do it. So firstly, I have got a public static void method set up. It's called write record to random access file. It's we pass in string file path. That's the file we, file we want to write to. Int line to write data. Which line do you want to write data on? Because with my system I'm doing, you write one record per line. So potentially you could use sequential file access in the future to read all the records. We have field one, field two, and field three. You can have as many fields as you want. I'm using three for this example. You can easily change this and modify my code slightly to have multiple fields or more than I specified in this tutorial. And then we have int chars per line. This is how big a record is going to be in terms of characters. This is essential. You get this correct to how big uh, the combined character count of field one, two, and three are. If you don't, you will have issues and you'll see records jumbled up. So make sure you, you get your characters per line correct. Think of this as how long a record can be. Now we've got that, that out of the way, let's start doing some stuff. So firstly, we want to create a file object. So I'm going to call it file and we set it to the file path we have passed into this method. Then we do string data equals field1 plus field2 plus field3. Basically, all the different fields we've passed in we're just going to combine into one string to make it easy next we're going to do int bytes per line equals chars per line plus two basically since we're going to separate each record by a new line we need to take into account that a new line character a slash and an n takes up two character slots so we're just adding in two. Yes, we could make the user and whoever is using this method consider that. However, this is so much easier and will more likely future-proof against people who may not fully know how random access files work or may overlook the fact a new line character counts as a character. So this is future-proofing for those who may overlook it, like I did. Then we want to do a try-catch. Once we get a try-catch set up, Inside, we want to do the following. In the try, we want to do random access file. A random access file equals new random access file, file rw. Basically, we're creating a random access file object. This is going to be the object used to write to the file. It's like, it's like a person writing a birthday card. They hold the pen and they write whatever they're told or whatever they think of to put in the birthday card. Probably, probably happy birthday, but you know, maybe it's like, congratulations, you're gonna die soon. Uh, then we do equals new random access file. File, this is gonna be the file object we created here. And then we put RW. RW stands for read and write. Yes, you could just put in W in this case, because we're only writing, but I'm doing this because um, you're not the boss of me. I'm my own boss. If you don't like this, go to some other channel. Oh wait, you can't. All the other ones don't do this stuff in as high quality as I do. So you're stuck here. And thank you for sticking with me. You're great. I love you. Right. Now we're going to do this. We got... Now we're going to have an if and else statement. So we're going to do if line to write data, which is referencing this variable, by the way, equals minus one. Where to write equals random access file dot length. Basically, if we pass in a minus one here, we're essentially saying, right, just put it at the end of the file like append it like we would with writing a record sequentially. This is pretty good as it provides a way to just dump it at the end of the file in an easy way. Else, 
where to write equals bytes per line times lines to write. Basically, to get jump from one position to another, to, to jump from the start of one line to the start of a new line, we need to basically get the amount of byte, get the bytes per line, and then times it by line to write data. I explained it in my previous tutorial how that works, so click the eye up there if you want to see it. After that, we're going to do random access file dot seek where to write. Random access file dot write data dot get bytes. Random access file dot write bytes system dot property get line separator. Random access file dot close. What are we doing here? We're telling the random access file object, right, put your pen into position we've just told you. Where to write is here, by the way. So the person writing the birthday card has put their pen in the spot they want to start writing from on the card. Dot write, data got dot get bytes, so essentially just writing the data, which we specified here. Right, write the happy birthday message. Then we got write byte system dot get property line dot separator. We're essentially writing a new line. Saying, right, after you write your data, I want you to put the pen on the new line. And that's all we're doing. And then we close the file, obviously, because we want to leave something open that we no longer lead. So once the person's written the birthday card, we're basically killing them. I'm sorry, guys. I, I sometimes do. I say dark things. And in the catch, you can put something like error. You can do what you want. You could print the exception, have some fancy error handling, like, sorry, the guy writing the birthday card had a heart attack I, because someone wrote his name in a black book labeled Death Note. I've been watching that anime. I binged it. It's a great anime. Anyway, guys, that's all. So we've we've got the code here. And now we're going to test it out. So write record to random access file. File path is right here. Test dot that. Zero is going to be the line we write to. And these are the three fields we're going to write. I am putting a space there just to show you can put spaces in it. And all of this is 38 characters long. Also, there's a delimiter variable here, which you could add in if you felt like it. I'm not, but if you wanted to, you can. So, we're going to click play. As you can see, no errors occurred. If we open the test.dat document, as you can see, it's literally just added what we wanted it to. Now, let's, now you're sceptical, right, it can write to the top of a line. Right, let's put in a 1. Now, you might be like, Max, it just spazzed up, it just put it on the same line. You're incorrect there, my friend. So, if we open this using Notepad++, as you can see, it went on to the next line. Uh, Notepad is not the best at showing what's happening in a DAT file. Notepad++ it can. So don't worry about what it shows in Notepad++, no, in, in Notepad. Open it in a more sophisticated text editor like Notepad++ and you will not have a problem, my friend. Anyway, guys, thanks for being a great audience. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you want to see more. And leave a comment with a request if you have a video you want answering. Uh, I promise, guys, in two weeks I will actually be uploading more often because it'll be summer and I can use this as another job. Thanks for being a great audience. I'll see you next time.